Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Redivus RB38V. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. So you'll find these standard accessories that you would expect in a modern HT radio. We've got the manual, we've got the base charger, We've got a belt clip. We've got the adapter for USB here because this uh, charger does take USB. So that's one of the nice features of it is we can charge it from any standard USB port. We also have included a 1500 milliamp hour battery and this radio is for the MERS frequencies. Let's go ahead and connect the battery up and I'll show you guys a few of the features of this radio. Okay, so right out of the gate, we've got a great big power button right up on top for both on and off. And then we've got a channel selector. This is kind of a little rocker switch that'll rock back and forth. On this side of the radio, we've got the connector for either the programming cable or a headset uh, or an external microphone. If I'm not mistaken, this is going to take the same adapters as a basic Baofeng radio. They did not include a headset, though, with this particular model radio. On the other side, we've got the PTT button and then volume controls. When we turn the radio on, Power on. You, do get, you do get the power on and a voice will tell you which channel you're on. And then we've got the nice green LED display right here on the bottom of the radio. So, and it does go off after a couple of seconds, but as we cycle through the channels... Four, three, two, one. It's clear and easy to figure out which of the MERS frequencies you're on. Now, there's a couple of advantages and disadvantages uh, comparing this radio to a recent video I did on another Redivus uh, radio. That was the 777 model that was FRS radio. The advantage of the FRS radio was it was 5 watts. This radio is limited to 2 watts. That's just our limit when we're using MERS frequencies. The advantage this radio has, though, that the other one did not, was a detachable antenna. And let me tell you from uh, the testing that I've already done, leave this guy in the box. Find you a better antenna. Uh, this just doesn't give us very much range at all. Uh, that is about the only downside that I've got with the radio. Radio is well constructed. The volume is clear and loud. And it's an overall well-built radio. So let's go ahead and I'm going to jump in the Jeep and let's do a range test with this. Okay, PJ, I'm at the end of our street. How's the audio sounding? Audio sounds good. Okay, so I'm uh, about to turn left onto the main street going in and out of our neighborhood. How's the audio here? I think I heard you say I'm turning left onto the main road. How is it doing? It was a little scratchy, but it came in. Okay, I am just about at the end of our, uh, our going out of the subdivision. Can you still hear me? Uh, down the subdivision. That was it. Okay, I am at the entrance of our subdivision. How copy? Copy good. Okay, I am in front of Sarah's house. How copy? Still copy, just fine. Okay, let's give it one more attempt at Henderson Lane. How copy? I can hear you. Can't tell exactly what you're saying. I did hear your how copy at the end, though. So what's my final thoughts on the little Redivus radio? Well, I like it for certain use cases. Uh, maybe you're hiking with the family, or maybe you're camping and you've got the kids and you want to give them a radio. It's a perfect solution for that. Uh, with the MERS frequencies, we don't require a license, so that allows us to hand these radios off to anyone. One thing, though, that just doesn't cut it is this antenna here. Uh, I think there's better solutions. Now, the signal sticks that I put on here, 
They're designed for the amateur band, so I'm sure they were not the best uh, antenna to put on there. SWR was probably off. I didn't even measure it. Uh, they were definitely better than the little rubber duck that comes with it. But for the money, it's not a bad little radio. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.